Sagittarius, hello there, my beautiful friends. We're going to do your general tarot reading for early May 2023. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know I appreciate each and every single one of you. So let's get right down to business, as always, and start you off with an oracle card here, just so we could dip our toes in the energy and see what's going on for the lovely Saggies. I hope you're all doing fabulous, my friends. Let's shuffle it up one time here. Talk to me, my guides. What do we got for Sagittarius in early May? And yeah, we're going to take a real quick look at this first card. Then we'll get into the full reading itself. And at the very end, I'll pull you a bonus card from the Shadowland Tarot just to see what might be in the shadows or what shadow work you can lean into, which is always interesting. But let's get it going. Let's get it rocking and popping here for the Sagis. Please, my guides, what do we got? Nice and quick. There it is. Okay, so what you are connected to emotionally is being highlighted here in a very big way with this first card. Okay, I'm sure you could see this extremely interesting imagery, and we're going to have to peel back the layers on this. Before we do, though, if you're new here, I'll be speaking about the May subscriber surprise towards the end, so you might want to check that out. Also, if you could kindly illuminate that like button by tapping it right on its third eye, you know, I'd greatly appreciate it. But enough of the promo, into the reading. Have a look at this card. So... In the imagery, we see this male. It looks like he's speaking to that female, and she's in a mirror of some sort. So that does imply some sort of distance or, you know, distance between them. But there is some sort of connection and communication here. But when I boil this card down to the nuts and bolts, I do feel like this is mainly about what, who and what we are connected to emotionally. I personally believe that when we form bonds and connections with people, whether, whether, interpersonal relationships, romantic relationships, friends, family, places, things, that does form some sort of chord, some sort of give and go. So when this card shows up, Spirit might be asking you like, hey, watch, you know, maybe analyze who you're giving your energy to. Maybe analyze whose energy might be influencing you. Okay, like it, it all goes round and around. Sometimes we give more energy into situations than others and vice versa. That's what this card is asking us to look at. Now, once again, it could also represent distance between you and somebody else you are very closely connected to or trying to communicate with them. But we're just going to put that down. I feel like there's more messages we could pull out of it. But yeah, let's get into tarot. I would say that first card is just a footnote. It doesn't make or break the reading. But yeah, I'm going to get you three of these in the upright before we get into the juiciness going. Let's shuffle it up one time. What do we got for Sadie? So... Last week's reading was pretty positive, my friends. It was titled A Surprising Wind, so I'm really hoping that a lot of you have had one, right? Winds come in all different shapes and sizes. And there was a lot of mystery in last week's reading, but it was feeling more positive than negative. And just know that these energies could still bleed over. Even if you did have a rough week last week, maybe something really good is coming at the front end of this one. So let's see what we have for you this week. You know energy is very fluid. It's never set in stone, so only take this how it hits for you. Because we could be seeing your vibe or somebody you're connected to. There's a lot of lovely Saggies out there. Let's get you three cards. What do we got for Sagittarius, please? Thank you. Options, choices, decisions. Very dreamy as well. We have the Seven of Cups here in position number one. Okay, let's give you two more. I already feel like this is going to be a layered one, Sagittarius. I'm picking up layers of energy already and we only have one card out hey we got our good friend the king of cups aka kyle of cups without a beard showing up right here in the dead center all right there could be a lot of emotional energy here as well a lot of water energy let's get you one more and we'll really start to break this down what do we got for sachi please thank you all right moon card so this mystery this unexpected this water energy is just showing up straight across the board my friends and we're gonna have to talk about this so before we do but i'm gonna give you a quick synopsis of the classical meanings and archetypes but yeah now looking right here at first glance there's all water all right now we have the seven of cups the king of cups the moon this is all water energy which is the realm of creativity it's the realm of emotion okay it's there's a lot of mystery here, though, with this moon on the back end. I feel like there's so many layers here. It's kind of like hitting me like a train for some reason energetically. So I'm interested to really start peeling back the layers of this reading. But position number one, we have the Seven of Cups. So you see this person. 
they're standing, they're looking at all those different cups, different options. So this could be very good. A lot of you could have a lot of different paths, a lot of different options, ways you can go or how things can turn out. This is very nice. But this is one of my bigger cards of daydreaming, okay? It is someone who is very much in the headspace. So you might be thinking more than you normally do. You might be daydreaming. Maybe someone's daydreaming about you for all I know. But the Seven of Cups is very much thought-driven, even though this is a water card. Water straight across the board, we could be, you, you might have heightened emotions for whatever reason. Now, emotions aren't a bad thing. They never are. But heightened emotions could be tough to grapple with from time to not, time to time. Now, moving to the center... We have our best friend there, the King of Cups himself, okay? Now, when he shows up in reading, it could obviously represent a water sign. So you might be connected to a water sign, so Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. And the King of Cups, all kings represent control of their respective suit. So once again, water is, yes, it's intuitive, it's psychic, it's dreamy, it's creative, but it's emotional. So there could be things about emotional control, controlling your feelings, or at least attempting to. When the King of Cups shows up, he shows up all the time in love readings. So this could represent romance with all this water, emotional connections. We've been seeing it since the very beginning. So I'm intrigued to see what shows up here. Usually this card shows up when you have a lot of love for somebody or someone has a lot of love for you. And you know, if you're a watcher of my readings, I don't mainly look at love alone, but there's a lot of undertones here already going towards that, if not just emotional situations. Now, as we move forward through the reading, we still have, yet again, more water. Right here on the back end, let's fix our King of Cups right here. Try to keep these cards straight. We have the moon. When this card shows up, it could represent a Pisces. I also throw Cancer in there because their ruling luminary is the moon. But all the things that I was already speaking about, the water energy, the creativity, the mental space, the emotional connections, all the things very psychic as well and dreamy so like you could be receiving a lot of things on the astral plane or the dream realm when both of these cards show up it is my biggest card of mystery the unexpected the unknown the unseen and remember like i said last week's reading was a surprising win okay we have more of this unexpected energy that has been showing up for saggy in recent weeks multiple times okay so there might be some curveballs coming up hopefully they're good ones but with all this water energy this is going to be a layered reading so with all that being said, let's dive deeper on it, Saggy. Let's jump in and clarify. Okay, let's get a good shuffle here and reset this. What do we got for Sagittarius, please? What do we got for my friends? And yes, this is where I go intuitive with the message, which means I just tell you how it feels to me. So feel free to do further research or rely on your base knowledge of tarot. Because as you know, every single reading is about the reader's interpretation, and I'm just giving you mine. Let's go in on that Seven of Cups. See what these options are about. And yes, if you're a reader yourself, please feel free to play along. That's why this box is here. If you're feeling any messages that you want to give to Saggy, you could drop it in the comments. I don't mind at all. All right, Seven of Cups time. You won't be stepping on my toes, my friends. Why is Seven of Cups here? Thank you. Okay, the big problem-solving energy here. We have the Eight of Swords in reverse underneath the Seven of Cups. Like, I need to figure this out. How can we figure this out? That's like a big thing that's just shooting through my intuition right now. So sure, there could be uh, problematic issues and situations popping up, but you might be playing problem solver or you could just be in the mental space like, all right, this can't be anymore. We need to figure this out once and for all. Like that's a huge vibe I'm picking up with the Eight of Swords in reverse. Now, generally this card can represent somebody that's feeling trapped or nervous. In reverse, this is that opening up type of energy this spring type of energy so once again watch out that your mind isn't like racing especially like with this energy opening up into the seven of cups okay maybe you're coming out of some anxiety or nervousness high strung times but for a lot of you i feel like this is straight up problem solving like let's get down to the nuts and bolts let's figure this out let's make it happen type of energy so i want to see how it plays out throughout the rest of the reading very intriguing right here on the front end Okay, but so much mental activity here, so much thought, so much mental activity. I don't want to say yet if it's nervousness or anxiety, because I do feel that alleviating, but we're just going to keep pressing forward. There could be somebody trying to really think themselves out of a problematic issue or situation here. So let's go in on that King of Cups. We're not going to get too hung up. It's 
So why is the King of Cups here? It could be a big key for this reading, especially that moon, like with the mystery over there. Mm. Oh, mm. we have the Six of Pentacles in reverse underneath this King of Cups. This is absolutely somebody like really not sharing how they're feeling about something. Okay, so there could be something you're thinking or feeling, Sagittarius, that you're like, all right, do not enter. Do not pass go. Do not collect $200 or whatever it might be. When I see this, it's somebody saying like, I'm not going to share how I feel. You don't need to know how I feel. That's it. Like you could be very skeptical of someone in this time as well. Like this is somebody not wanting to emotionally open up for whatever reason. Now, I don't know what the reasoning for that is, but the six of pentacles in reverse, usually this is a card of equality. Usually this is a card of charity, gift giving, easy flowing type of energy. So when I see it in reverse underneath this king of cups, maybe you're having issues with a water sign that's a little self-centered. If not, when I see the Six of Pentacles in reverse, it's somebody shutting something down, okay? So whether it's emotionally shutting something down, shutting someone out, like these are things that I'm picking up here. So maybe that's a mode you're in. Maybe you're shutting something down or shutting something out, but this is like, all right, yeah, I'm not, I'm not opening up to this. I'm closing this out, I'm closing this down. So there might be something you're feeling you're just keeping within for whatever reason. Let's move over to the Moon card. And we'll see what that's about before we get into a quick little recap. Then we get into the shadow card because this is very interesting, my friends. So why is the moon here for my Sagis, please? I feel like this could be a cornerstone of the reading. Okay, lovers. I don't necessarily feel like this is bad. I feel like something could be resolved in a way that you don't possibly see coming. Okay, especially with how we've been seeing all this stuff, possible challenges in the front end, the lovers in the upright under the moon. This feels good to me. Okay, like the unexpected double major arcana on back. Some sort of love winning through or winning over could absolutely be part of this for Saggies. Like just the love being so pure, love being so strong that it just wins through is nice. Now for a portion of you with... You know, the moon card, now the lovers, this could represent a Gemini or a Gemini coming into your life for whatever reason. But I feel like this is a very powerful bond and something is going to be solved. Like we do have this problem solver energy and somebody trying to shut another one out. But there is so much emotional connection. It goes right back to this very first card. You ever been so closely connected to somebody that you could basically feel what they feel or think what they think? That's what this is making me feel. Now, if you're not in any romantic things or interpersonal relationship things, I would just say that this is something getting resolved in a way that you don't possibly see. If you're going through problems, issues, situations, like there could be a resolution coming in unexpectedly, like where it just, oh, well, oh, I never even thought of that. Wow, that worked out way better than I thought. I never saw that angle. So this feels very good. If you're going through problems, issues, situations, it could be resolved by somebody very close to you or in a way that you don't possibly see. So let's go through and do a quick recap. There's a lot of moving parts here, Saggy. Only take what hits for you. But in the box here, if you look at position number one, we have the Eight of Cups, uh, the Seven of Cups, pardon me, with the Eight of Swords in reverse. So to me, this did feel like a lot of mental activity, a little bit of overthinking possibly, but to me, it was more like someone in problem solving mode. So you might be dealing with certain situations, issues, problems that could be serious and you could just be trying to figure it out. Or this is someone in your life that is the problem solver. Like, all right, let's get this going. Let's finish this for once and for all type of energy. Moving to the center, this is where we hit a little bit of a speed bump because we have the King of Cups with the Six of Pentacles in reverse. This is somebody emotionally shutting down, emotionally shutting something out. The main thing I was feeling here, yes, like I'm not sharing my emotions with that person. I'm not telling them what I think. I'm not telling them what I feel. Like, so there could be something you're feeling in a strong way that you're just keeping within for whatever reason. For a portion of you, it might be a water sign you're having big issues with. Especially with the moon on the back, there's big connections to water sign energy here. So if you're connected to them, they could be very prominent in the coming week. But we have the moon card with the lovers. And I feel like these two alignments fit together. Like the lovers in the moon and this, like there could be a solution coming or a problem being fixed that in a way that you didn't quite see, like unexpectedly or surprising, like I've been saying. So 
whether it's a solution, whether it's somebody coming in to help you out or assist you in some sort of way, this feels very, very good. It also felt like an extremely intense emotional bond and connection where you can like feel what another feels or think what they think. It was very much intertwined type of energy. So do with that what you will, Saggy. I'm going to get you one shadow card here. Obviously not every Saggy is in a situation like that, but let's get you one shadow card. It's in the shadows for my friends. If you are going through problems and issues, like I do feel solutions. I'll just leave it at that. So what is in the shadows? Whether it's a shadow within yourself or an angle you don't quite see. I always like to pull this card at the very end. It's nice and introspective. Okay. Queen of Swords, logical, plan-based. For a portion of you, it could be issues or a scar with an older feminine figure, mother figure. When the Queen of Swords shows up in the shadows. Okay. Usually she's honest, straightforward, shrewd. For a portion of you, this could be a very cold individual. You might have somebody that you're connected to where they are just very cold and calculating. That is something to watch out for, for sure. But another thing with the Queen of Swords showing up in the shadows is Spear could be asking you to take the reins in regards to planning and strategy. Yes, as a fire sign myself, I'm not a Saggy, but at placements there, I know that sometimes we could just do things spontaneously and that's totally cool, that's fine, sometimes. But every now and then we need to crack down and make a plan of action. Like sometimes spontaneity could get old pretty quick. But for a portion of you, if it's not that, if this isn't a cold person, Spirit could be asking you to use your brain, be logical, and step into this Queen of Swords energy. So Sagi, that's what I have for you this week, my friends. Don't click away just yet. I'm gonna give you the details of the May subscriber surprise. If you got your name in for the April subscriber surprise, the winners will be announced after this week's Fire and Air Signs. But for the May subscriber surprise, I'm giving away two copies of the beautiful Tarot of the Owls. Once again, we're going right back to it because it's gorgeous. So if you'd like to get your name in for this, it's two simple things as always. First, you must be subscribed, and second, let me know down in the comments, out of all the cards in this week's reading, which one spoke to you the most. You'll be entered to win, and at the end of May, I will pick the two winners at random, as always, my friends. Much love to you, and I'll see you next time.